And we welcome David Sompy from who is the chairperson of Planet Youth Lanark County. He is our presenter today for our for the Rural FASD Support Network, and we're thrilled to have David join us. And we asked David to join us because we know from some of the research that's been done regarding people with FASD, particularly around Dr. Struska's uh, research in the United States back in 2004, and then again, Dr. Popova's research done in 2016 in Canada, that almost 50% of people with FASD are going to struggle with alcohol and drug addictions. And David is, as the chairperson of Planet Youth Lanark County, is bringing a model forward that is evidence-based and is going to really make an impact on alcohol and drug addictions within this county. And so, David, take it away. Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here speaking to, to your group. and. Uh... And I look forward to you know this being the start of a of a collaborative relationship. So, um, as was said in the, in the introduction, I'm the chairperson of a of a committee of a, of a steering committee, uh, which is a community led or, uh, uh, effort to bring a model that was first developed in in Iceland and and had remarkable results, which I'm going to show you about show you in a few minutes. So we're the first community in Canada to, to uh, adopt this model, and I'm just going to take you through a little bit of that, a little bit of that with this presentation. But maybe as a bit of context, um, uh, we were really pleased, uh, pleased, I guess, I don't know if that's the right word, we're validated, I guess, by uh, seeing this report, which is called Preventing Problematic Substance Use in Youth. Uh, it's a, and there's the, the Dr. Teresa Tam, who we've, of course, heard a lot about in the news with COVID-19 lately, is the Chief Public Health Officer of Canada, and she does an annual report. In uh, 2018, her annual report was focused on, on substance use by youth. And uh, in, in that report, she put out a call to actions, you know, which you can read on this slide here, but basically she's saying, let's everybody start working on this together because it's gonna take the whole of our society to really make a difference here public health, primary health care, social services, justice and education, and, and it's really worthwhile doing. In that report, which, and that report, by the way, if you want to read it, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting read, is available on, on Health Canada's website. In that report, she refers to something that she called uh, the Icelandic model, and, uh, and there's a quote in, in, this, uh, in the report that talks about the work that had been done in, in Iceland. It's done through uh, an organization called the Icelandic Center for Social Research and Analysis, which is uh, part of the School of Public Health at Reykjavik University. So uh, this particular organization has created uh, a, a project or a program that they call Planet Youth, which, and, the, and the, uh, the purpose of Planet Youth is to help communities around the world embrace this model. The reason why we're doing it, or the, way, the reason why it works, is that the model is, seems to make a lot of sense. It's, it's, it's based on, on uh, a few key assumptions. Uh, one of them is that adolescents, youth, they, they are social products. They are, their behaviors, the way they live their lives, are very strongly influenced by the environment that they grow up in, their communities. And we also know that you know, once a behavior is adopted, it's really hard to change it. Uh, I mean, I, always fighting the battle of the bulge. I, I, uh, I, I, you know, I eat too much sugar and, if, and it's really hard for me not to eat that sugar. So I'm always fighting to try to get that weight off and keep it off. And that's you know, my personal view on that. But there's a high probability of, of changing, uh, of, of successfully causing change if you change the context in which people are living. So uh, in my case, my wife and I both decided to uh, start avoiding gluten and we started eating healthy together and it helped me lose weight. So that was my social context that was helping there. Same things apply for young children, but the four domains that are talked about in the model and that are addressed in the model are shown on the right-hand side of this slide. So it's what happens within the family, what happens within the peer group of the, of the, of the young people, 
what happens when they're at school and the environment they have at school and what they do in their leisure time. And the intersection of those four domains is what impacts the, um, the, the outcomes, the trajectory that youth have as they're growing up. So the idea is, is that if we can, uh, if we can measure and, and determine uh, how healthy an environment uh, an adolescent has in those four domains, or more precisely, if we can get a handle on what risk factors and protective factors exist within each of those four domains, and if we can, if we can learn what those are, then there are certain things that we can change. We can change some of those risk factors, we can dampen them down and maybe strengthen some of the protective factors. And in doing so, we will see over time that our youth, the, the young people who are growing up in our communities, uh, end up making better decisions. So here's what happened in Iceland. They started doing this work in about 1998. And at the time, Iceland had the worst statistics in Europe for adolescent substance use. And these are just some examples of tracking over, since 1998. So they were reporting that 42% uh, of, uh, of grade 10 youth uh, who were surveyed said they'd been drunk in the last 30 days. Tobacco and 17% uh, had smoked cannabis. Look over to the right-hand side of the chart. In 2017, they're way down there at, uh, what, 5% for, for drunk in the last 30 days of grade 10. Now that's a remarkable outcome and you can see it, you know, there's a few bumps as they go along the way, but you can see that, uh, that they've made remarkable progress here. It is interesting to look at 2008 there. There's a little bit of a bump there and I don't know if I'm reading too much into that or not, but 2008 was the financial crisis and it hit Iceland really hard. And so uh, my, you know, my guess is that we may be seeing a little bit of that in, 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 that, in that data there. But the important thing here is, is to notice that this, this trend that's here, and, and it's, there's assignable causes to why they were successful with being able to dampen down this, 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 uh, you know, these awful statistics that they had in 1998. And they are consistently uh, leading now Europe in terms of the lowest use of, of substances by adoles adolescents. And they've done all sorts of other studies. They've compared themselves against other Nordic countries, um, they've done all sorts of, of, of you know, baseline comparisons and, and it's, it's truly amazing what they've done. So our goal within uh, Planet, Planet Youth Lanner County is to learn from what these folks have done in Iceland, to apply the same sort of methodology in Lanner County, learn what are the things that are happening by gathering data from grade 10 students that go to the schools in, in, in Lanner County, and then see what we can do to emulate this kind of, of trajectory to make things better. The other thing that I would say is that this is going to be the probably the last time that I speak about any particular substance in this in this um, presentation because this is a prevention methodology. This is we're, what we're here now measuring is an outcome. It's a, a lagging indicator, if you will. The real predictive indicators are risk and protective factors. And that's really what we're gonna focus on. That's what the methodology focuses on. It focuses on the, um, some people call it, call it the, uh, uh, sort of the environment that, that youth are, are growing up in and making that environment a healthy, healthier, better place to live. And when that happens, uh, youth thrive, they, they, do, they do better. So, the methodology is based on surveys of grade 10 students. And the idea here is that the grade, what we learn from the grade 10 students, if say we're gonna be surveying them in the uh, fall of 2020, the surveys are gonna tell us something about the experience that those students have had up until the time they're in grade 10. And, and uh, so it's gonna give us a, a measure of what their experience has been like living in, in, in their community and going to their schools. It's unlikely that any of the, um, sometimes we call them interventions, it's, it's, it's unlikely that any of the things that our communities do in response to what we learn from their, those grade 10s is actually gonna change much for those grade 10s because they're already young, you know, coming into young adults. But what we will learn from them, we can develop programs, we can develop interventions that will be targeted perhaps at uh, grade fives 
or, or even younger, or grade sevens. And then five years, if we say, say we're targeting grade fives, five years from now, when we survey grade tens, it'll be those kids who are in grade five now, and we'll be able to measure uh, the impact, the change that we've been able to, to cause through whatever it is we do at the community level. Um, as I said earlier, the, the folks in Iceland have been doing this for a long time and they've been working in a lot of different countries, a lot of different communities around the globe. So they have more than 20 years of experience in, in analyzing, uh, doing these surveys and analyzing them. And it's a really well-oiled machine so that uh, about eight weeks after our surveys are administered, we'll get back reports. So um, let's say we are able to do the surveys in October of 2020, we'll have the reports back uh, by Christmas time. And those reports will be uh, two types of reports. There'll be a report that each school will get telling the school what students who attend that school said, what, the, what their survey results are. And each community will also get a report. So in this case, we're defining community as a municipality. So we've got all of all the municipalities in Lanark County plus the plus the town of Smith Falls. So uh, all the students who live in Lanark Highlands, no matter what high school they go to, they will be included in the report that's for Lanark Highlands. Same thing for Smith Falls or or Tay Valley or Carleton Place where I live. Once those reports come back, it's up to the community to decide what they want to do. The community. Uh, it is, 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 has the responsibility of understanding what's in the report and saying, hmm, I, I'm concerned about that, I wanna do something about it. And that's really, really an important thing. So this is, I guess, my, uh, what I'd like to reach out to folks who are here, if you're living in Lanark County and you're part of this, uh, you know, wanna be part of this, this effort, there's really where we can ask you to, to get plugged in and make a difference. As these reports become available, they will be, the community ones will be available to anyone in the community. We'll be uh, organizing uh, meetings in which we'll present what we've learned. We'll have experts available, um, both from Canadian experts as well as folks from Iceland who've been doing this for a long time, to help us understand what it is we're, uh, we're seeing in the data help us understand what other communities have done in order to respond to similar sorts of situations and then create an action plan for how we, we as a community can move forward. There will be recurring reports. Our, our, uh, our the surveys will be done on a recurring basis. So as we do that, we'll have essentially a dashboard. So we'll be able to watch for things. If we see something that's a concern in the first data, first reports from the, from the first survey, then when we do the second and third and fourth, uh, surveys. Hopefully we will have developed uh, uh, plans, interventions to address those, those concerns and we'll start to see things change. So this is, for me, this is a pretty exciting thing. This is, um, everybody has their own lens that they look through and, and their own reason for deciding that they want to work on a particular project. In my case, this is, this is what I was really interested in. I've been involved in I was on the board, I was the chair of the board of the hospital in Carleton Place. I'm gesturing because it's just two doors away from me here uh, for a few years. And, and uh, I'm on the board of the Royal Ottawa Hospital right now. And, you know, great organizations. Um, and I was, bef I was also on the board of the Champlain Lynn for six years. And one of the things that I would say, particularly at the Lynn level, I found sometimes frustrating is that you would see great initiatives, but what was the recurring benefit of it? Were you, were you actually making a difference? How could you tell you were making a difference? And this methodology has that built in. So I'm really excited by that. And I'm hoping that as we learn in, in Lanark County about the power that can come from this, we will start to see uh, communities really embrace it. And hopefully communities across Ontario and Canada will as well. So as I said, the steering committee is community-led. Uh, we have a really diverse group of people who, who are at the table, uh, people who work professionally in, in social services, uh, we have uh, family doctors, and we've got volunteers. Um, we have uh, both school boards that, that service uh, Lanark County memorandums of understanding with us. Of course, we need to partner with the school boards in order to be able to conduct surveys, for example, in the schools and also to, you know, to implement uh, 
plans once we have the surveys back. So I'm really pleased that both the Catholic District School Board of Eastern Ontario and the Upper Canada District School Board are, are uh, sol solidly supporting us, as is the Leeds, Grenville and Lanark District Health Unit. Um, we wouldn't be in the, in, able to uh, be doing what we're doing right now if it wasn't for the very, very strong support of the health unit. Uh, open doors for Atlantic Children and Youth, uh, which is a local mental health uh, service provider. Kevin Cloutier is the executive director of that. He's also the vice chair of Planet Youth Atlantic County. Uh, United Way East Ontario is a big, big supporter for us. We are actually, they, we've actually signed up with them. And so we're not a legal entity. So any fundraising we do actually, we, we are doing uh, with United Way East Ontario as our, as our fundraising arm. Um, so that uh, we don't have to go through the effort of uh, you know, becoming incorporated and those kinds of things. So they're doing all of that, that kind of back office stuff for us, which is great. We've got youth focused organizations at, at our table, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, uh, representatives from the youth centers and the various communities around Lanark County and the town of Smith Falls. Um, uh, we have, uh, we, we, we are considered to be the prevention arm of the Lanark County Municipal Drug Strategy. And so we've got folks from this Drug Strategy Steering Committee there. And we've had really, really good support from the police service boards around, around our county. So I'm really, really um, heartened and appreciative of this support. We uh, launched in uh, January of 2020, launched meaning we signed an official uh, uh, five-year agreement with the folks from, uh, from Iceland. We're the first community in Canada to do that. Um, We've uh, also, I'll give you a little bit more detail in a minute, but uh, through, uh, through Open Doors, there's a research engagement with the Public Health Agency of Canada to look to do some specific work about, about adopting the, or adapting this to, uh, to, to the Canadian context. And as I said earlier, we're working with both school boards and we're getting all ready to go to do our first survey this spring and then COVID-19 happened. So of course, there's no students in classes and you know everything everything is the world is turned upside down for us so right now we're on hold and we're planning uh surveys after classes resume but i mean it's going to take some time for the schools to, to to land and everything to get going so you know fingers crossed the uh we're, we're everybody's healthy and and we have COVID 19 under control so schools can start again in september and then we can maybe see our, our surveys being administered in october uh, on the right there has a picture of me, Fraser Scandalberry from United Way on the far right of it, and uh, Jan and Paul are two guys from Iceland who are over here as part of the, uh, the official launch. Um, I did mention a little bit about some research that's going on. I'm really pleased that uh, Tanya Halsell, who is a uh, uh, postdoctoral fellow at the Institute for Mental Health Research, which is affiliated with the Royal Ottawa Hospital, uh, is, is doing some work with us. Tanya is, is uh, very, very focused on, on youth, youth mental health and a particularly community-based youth mental health work. Uh, and so with Tanya and with Kevin Cloutier uh, from Open Doors, uh, we're, uh, we're developing an evaluation framework. And this framework, uh, we're gonna be the first community to use it, but it's available to any, any community in Canada that wants is interested in it and hopefully will help them uh, rapidly adopt uh, a similar type of similar type of prevention methodology. Um, also, um, as the first bullet here, I guess, is talking a little bit about that. So the framework is going to be looking at not only uh, impact on problematic substance use, but we believe that there's a, a strong correlation with mental wellness or mental health impact extension we're doing I guess a little bit in the evaluation is looking at mental health use and with what's happening with this right now in terms of COVID-19 uh, there's actually some work to investigate uh, opportunities to do some specific COVID-19 studies based on on the survey um, if we are uh, let's make the assumption we are able to do the surveys in October reports in December um, that's going to be pretty a pretty uh, rapid turnaround time and so hopefully our communities will be able to learn something from that in terms of not only what was happening as a baseline but also what is the impact of COVID-19. Um, very interesting to note that there are several new Planet Youth uh, partners around the world that are rural. Uh, the graphic I'm showing right here is from uh, is from the planetyouth.org website. The URL is at the bottom there, and there's there uh, right now there's 32 countries and 111 
communities that are uh, adopting the model. And you can see Canada is there, so that's us. We'll be pleased about that. But in the last uh, few weeks, there have been a, a few webinars which have been uh, organized uh, partly in, in response to what's happening with COVID-19 and, and, and communities that are uh, a little bit further along than we are in terms of, of implementing the model uh, have been participating in, in those webinars. If anybody's interested in looking at them, if you, uh, if you look at the Planet Youth ISRA Facebook page, you should be able to get webinars from there. On the 14th of May, the webinar was uh, was conducted from uh, Ireland and Australia. In Ireland, uh, it's Galway, and then some, which is a fairly big city, and then some small rural areas around uh, Galway. They've actually done their first survey, and reports are available. I'll show you an example in a minute. And in Australia, they've also uh, done surveys, I think, last fall, and they have five sites and two The communities are quite small. So it's very interesting uh, thought to see that, that you know, these fairly small rural communities that feel a little bit like Lanark County are, are, uh, are embracing the model. On the 25th of May, a um, community from Vermont, uh, we from Lanark County, and also a community from West Virginia uh, presented their plans. Uh, the, um, uh, the West Virginia group is actually uh, led by um, Professor Alfgeir Christensen, who is a senior researcher from Iceland, but he's now uh, a professor at um, um, in Morgantown, West Virginia, and he's leading the effort there. So there's a couple of uh, communities in the U.S. and Lanark County, and and we're the North American leaders in, in in bringing this project forward. There are other communities in Canada who are interested in it. Others in Ontario and uh, uh, Calgary is looking at it, and uh, I know the Battlefords in, in Saskatchewan as well. So there are other other places that are looking to uh, embrace the model and we're hoping that we can uh, help them as, as we move ahead. So I wanted to show you this. This may be a little bit hard uh, to see when you're looking at it right now, but this is a really colorful graphic that came from Ireland. And if you want to see it, you can see down at the bottom there, uh, planetyouth.ie. That's the uh, website for the Irish um, group that's, that's bringing out, uh, that, that's implementing the model. And there's one thing that's kind of surprising, which I've circled here. Uh, I'm going to read it to you so you, prob you probably can't see it. So it's talking about uh, extracurricular activities. You can see the domain there and, and uh, you can see that, uh, uh, you know, 49% uh, uh, are physically active three times a week or more, 31% uh, an hour or less of physical activity per week. And then a really interesting result. Teenagers who are active in a sports club or team in a particular community are less likely to smoke and use cannabis. So that's good. That's an outcome that you want, but slightly more likely to report drunkenness. Now, these are the kinds of surprises that, 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 that show up in various communities. One would hope that being involved in these sports clubs would make it less likely that you're going to be drinking. But in this particular case, they found actually a, a, a higher risk. I don't know what it is. Maybe after the soccer game, they're going to the pub. It's possible. Um, but I, I know for sure that the folks in Ireland are digging in to find out why this is. So I expect we're going to see some, some things that are kind of, uh, you know, we may see similar things in Lanark County where things are a little bit surprising. But here you can see some of the examples of, of, uh, of correlations that they find in, in, in the data. So they're seeing, you know, what is the influence of family or what's, what's the peer group effects or, or you know, what's going on in their schools um, and how is that impacting some of the behaviors that, that they're seeing. So this is just a colorful graphic as a cover page with the full reports that came out of Ireland, I think are, are, you could download them if you wanna see it on, that, on the website. So I look forward to uh, hopefully at the end of 2020, being able to report something like this that's based on surveys that have been conducted in Lanark County. Really, that's my presentation for, day, to, for today. If you want to learn more about, about uh, what, we're, what we're doing in Lanark County, we have a website, which is planetyouthlanark.ca. And if you want to learn more about the methodology, by So thank you very much, David. We uh, certainly, uh, a, a couple of things that really jumped out at me from your presentation, but uh, one that I really want to stress is about the fact that uh, 
Uh, we, we certainly have a lot of partners, um, even around Canada, uh, definitely within Ontario, who are not located within Lanark County that are going to be watching this presentation. And so I guess my first question would be if someone in a different community wanted to start looking at bringing this initiative, how, what would you recommend in terms of what their first steps would be? Well, people are welcome to, to reach out to me and I, I'm happy to have a, a conversation. Um, but I can also point you to a couple of references. On the planetyouth.org website, there are uh, uh, copies of two peer-reviewed papers. Uh, it's so these companion papers. And one of them is, you know, a, 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 a pretty in-depth uh, review of the methodology and why it works. The second one is the 10 steps to implementing the model. And, and the one thing I would say is that steps one, two, and three occur before you do the survey. And it's all about building capacity in the community. And so we've been working at this, uh, you know, Planet Youth Lanark County has been working at this, so I guess it's coming up on three years now. Um, and, and we, we started our work based on, uh, on a, a, you know, we had the bones of, 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 a, of a, an initiative with the municipal drug strategy that exists around Lanark County has been, been here for 10 years. So we're kind of building upon that in that uh, uh, not all communities, but several communities in, in Lanark County actually have uh, municipal committees of council that are, that are focused on, on the municipal drug strategy. Uh, other communities have very strong youth and youth focused um, uh, committees. So we're, we're relying on and leveraging those groups as being the places where the reports will land. And, and those groups will be the ones that are going to take responsibility for um, sort of leading their communities in the analysis of, of, of what the reports are saying. And that's the important thing. There's no use in doing a survey if you don't have anybody to act upon it. So that's the key thing is, is, you know, figuring out who are your key, key people in your community that can work with you to build that capacity in the community to make it happen. Thank you. The, uh, the second thing that uh, I was thinking about as well, and you made reference to it earlier in terms of the, uh, the connection between uh, mental health and, and, um, I guess, uh, alcohol and drug abuse and, and, and so on. And, and I make reference to it because uh, at the beginning, I was talking about Dr. Popova's study back in 2016, where she identified almost 50% of people with FASD are going to have uh, additional challenges. But she actually placed that under the, under the category of mental health challenges. And so, uh, those addictions are actually classified in the same way as an anxiety disorder, PTSD, and so on. So I'd like to hear why you made, why you see that connection between mental health and addictions. Well, I mentioned earlier that, uh, that I'm on the, I sit on the board of the Royal Ottawa, which is a you know, specialty mental health and addictions hospital. So, uh, and, and, uh, it's just been, it's, everybody has been touched by, by uh, mental illness and, and a lot of people who experience mental illness also have, have uh, had some experience with problematic substance use. I, I know lots of people who've had it. I mean, my grandfather committed suicide. He was an alcoholic and, and he, you know, he, my father was 16 years old when that happened. It, it impacted my father for his whole life. So, I mean, you know, every family has experienced it. And, uh, I mean, you don't have to go very far. Right? So, to me, it's just two sides of the same coin in, in the same way that you talked about it earlier. And so, uh, several of us, when we were looking at, at, at the model and the outcome, you know, our question to the folks from Iceland was, well, this, you know, it's amazing what you've done from a substance use point of view, what is the impact on mental health? And the answer was, well, they believe that, you know, they believe there really is a strong impact, but they actually hadn't done the quantitative analysis yet on that. They've been very focused on the problematic substance use. 
So it just seemed like a natural thing to do. So, um, um, you know, I, I, th I hope we're getting past the point where, where people who, uh, who have concurrent you know, substance use problems and, and mental health issues, I hope we're past the point where care providers say, well, get yourself clean and then we'll deal with your mental health issues. Um, I'm not confident that we're actually past that. Um, I've heard, I've heard people, I've had people tell me that they saw a doctor who told them that addicts were supposed to, uh, were supposed to be experiencing pain. Right? That's not healthy, right? So uh, I just think this is a way of, of breaking down some of that stigma. Beautiful. And, and, and we, we certainly within the rural FASD support group always make those same type of statements. Uh, you know, uh, our big statement is that no one chooses to do this. No one chooses to become an addict. No one chooses to have mental health challenges. Uh, these are all, these are all factors beyond their particular control and, and it's our position to step in and try to support and help and, and, and work with them as they go through that. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I just remembered one other thing that I meant to say uh, in, in the presentation part of this that, um, that, that we are uh, absolutely going to be, be uh, doing as, as the reports come available here. We have a specific uh, uh, committee that's, that's, that's focused on engaging youth be part of the what you know what are we learning from the surveys what are we learning from the reports and what are we going to do about it and uh, so we have um, there's a particular subcommittee of our steering committee which is the youth engagement subcommittee and, uh, and as much as possible we're going to keep the adults out of the room <laughs> and, and, and we're, and we're going to try to empower truly empower youth to, to, to give us their advice and and to the extent that we have influence over you know, what communities do with, with the reports and, and what responses they make, we're going to do our best to make sure that the youth have a, vo have a voice there, as well as, you know, the old guys with the gray beards. And, and, uh, and that, I think, is a really, really important thing. And that's part of what we talked, what I talked about with Tanya, who's helping us. And we also have uh, uh, Rebecca from the health unit, who, is, who, who makes her whose living is, 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 you know, developing relationships and, and with, with youth, um, she's, she's leading that, that part of it. So that's another piece that we're trying to do, which is um, not necessarily formally part of, of uh, other implementations of the model, but we're, we're determined that's going to happen here. Beautiful. So just finally a conclusion, uh, if, if people are wanting to reach out, if they're wanting to get involved, uh, particularly around uh, within Ladder County and, and speaking with the municipalities, where would you direct them? How should they contact? There's an, if they go to planetyouthlanark.ca, there's a, a link with that they can use to send an email there, and that email will arrive in my inbox and, and uh, Fraser Scandalberry's inbox, and between the two of us, we promise we'll get back to you promptly. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.